Preston Dennett began investigating UFOs and the paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters. Since then, he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide variety of paranormal phenomena. He is a field investigator for the MUFON UFO Network and the author of 23 books and 100 articles. And they have been translated into numerous foreign languages, and that's really helpful. He has also taught classes on paranormal subjects, lectures across the country, and this will be Preston's 12th appearance on 21st Century Radio. Obviously, we think very highly of his research. Hour one, we will review his latest book called Healing Power of UFOs, 300 True Accounts of People Healed by Extraterrestrials. In hour two, we'll focus on his 2018 titled Undersea UFO Base, an in-depth investigation of USOs in the Santa Catalina Channel. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio, Preston Dennett. Hey, thank you. It's an honor. Thank you very much. Well, it's an honor to have you. You really have been doing some great stuff, Preston. I've you... been working hard. <laughs> I know. You're one of the hardest UFO workers I've ever known. And the best thing about you is you keep checking. You keep checking what people are saying rather than just accepting what they're saying. And that's enormously important in this particular subject. Now, so how did you get involved with UFO research, Preston? Uh, involuntarily. It was not my choice, something I certainly wasn't looking for. Uh, and, you know, what happened, you know, I was very skeptical of this subject and uh, heard a report on the news about a sighting over Alaska back in 1986 uh, November, I remember it vividly. We were all there, my whole family. I, you know, I have five brothers and sisters, a uh, pretty big family, and we all just kind of went, huh, and didn't think much of it, except I thought, my gosh, you know, this pilot is putting him, his reputation on the line. And I remembered that my brother, years ago, earlier, had said he'd seen a UFO, and we all just kind of laughed at him. And I asked him about it, and he described this really amazing encounter. Uh, he had, was with two friends who I knew, and they chased this metallic ship down the Reseda Boulevard, actually, here in Southern California. And I uh, thought, wow, you know, and can I talk to, you know, Phil and Greg, the other guys who were there? And he's like, sure. And uh, it was pretty compelling what they were telling me. So I started asking everyone I knew. I uh, found people at work who had seen UFOs. I had a friend who had missing time. Someone at work had missing time. Boy, what a big surprise this was, wasn't it? For all of you, yeah. all of a sudden you bump into this? Not good news. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, I bought all the UFO books. I was going to disprove this subject and uh, found out, actually, there was a lot of evidence out there. It had been studied for decades. Uh, still wasn't being taken seriously. It was you know, fraught with controversy, all kinds of things that really um, I wasn't expecting, but did find a lot of people within my circle of family and friends and uh, co-workers who had really dramatic encounters. I bet you I, I, I bet you I laughed at UFOs harder than you did in the old days. <laughs> I just didn't believe it. I remember seeing I like didn't either. In Search Of. There yeah. was, that was like one of the only TV programs oh, I remember that, that one, featured yeah. it. And I'm like, yeah, right. You know, this whole family claimed they see, saw a UFO. And I'm like, well, they were, you know, obviously misperceiving. Uh, I found, you know, I, I had made a bunch of false assumptions about this subject, uh, which I think skeptics in general do. They don't realize how much evidence there is out there. Uh, they don't realize that how many people are seeing these kinds of things. Right, yeah. Well, ever since New York Times, it was just a couple of years ago, broke that story on giving their support to looking into UFOs. And now there's some very big articles all over the place. Uh, it seems that that the government now is accepting the fact that they should let people know about them. And I just feel so poorly for all those other people that lost their jobs, got punished in one way or the other, ridiculed, etc. And now we're finding out that all of it was basically true. Yeah, can you imagine? I mean, there are reports of people who have lost their lives over this subject. Uh, it's taken very, very seriously at high yeah. levels of government. They've known for a very long time it's a real phenomena and still ridiculed witnesses. Uh, in my opinion, our 
military handled this pretty poorly. You know, I do have sympathy for them because this is a difficult situation. And from a military standpoint, this is an unknown and a threat to national security for sure. Yeah. So they've cut, there's still a cover up. Yes, it's crumbling. It's this disclosure movement is moving forward, but it's still not open yet. Our work isn't done. Yeah, still people are going to get fired for it every now and then if you open your mouth too much. Well, how did you get involved in researching UFO healings? I interviewed this lady who had had this dramatic sighting. She started describing this other experience she had where she had been diagnosed with a cyst in her fallopian tubes. It was causing her all kinds of problems. And uh, mind you, she had had a lot of sightings. She'd been abducted for years and years described a very rich history of UFO encounters within her own life. And uh, was diagnosed with the cyst and had it diagnosed and an operation was set, surgery. And the night before the surgery, she had a visitation in her room. She doesn't really remember what happened other than, you know, quote, they came uh, to visit her. And she goes to the doctor the next day and they're like, well, you know, they took the MRIs and X-rays prior to surgery and they're like, well, this is strange. You know, we can't find the cyst. And, and uh, did you have surgery? Where did you go to have surgery? And she's like, well, I didn't, you know, knowing, you know, probably what happened here. And this person who reads the x-ray is like, well, we know you did because there's fluid here, you know, in your fallopian tubes, which is only present after having had surgery. And, and then pointed out a laser scar on her abdomen. And accused her of having surgery, which she denied. <laughs> it's a little so. <laughs> that's a little bit backwards here. <laughs> right. Sorry. So this is an excellent case. Uh, there's a, other cases just like this. Uh, Bill Hamilton caught a case again with before and after X-rays of a lady who had a cyst in her breast, and had an experience literally uh, the day before the operation. This is a phenomenon that turns up over and over again. In UFO healing cases, ETs will heal people immediately prior to them having their scheduled surgery. Mm-hmm. So that happened in this case for sure. So they must be pretty smart cookies to be able to do such things. I, I really was excited when I read the uh, case number 001, the young boy uh, who was driving his tricycle when he had... A problem. He had, uh, he fell down and broke his uh, with a leg, or it was his arm. Right. He believes it was his arm. It's a very early case. The first one, actually, that I could find. Yeah, 1914. Wow, that's really going back there, brother. Can you imagine? I mean, this phenomenon has been going on for at least a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, certainly since the 1950s, it kicks up. But that's the earliest case I could find. And this kid, see, you know, falls, broke, breaks his arm. Uh, he thinks it's broken and sees this little short figure with compelling eyes uh, and uh, thinking it's a leprechaun or something. He's like, the figure says, no, I'm a gnome, uh, which is kind of interesting. Yes, you know, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I was fascinated, really. Uh, so please go on. I, I, I got too excited there. Yeah, I mean, there's a long tradition, certainly, of these kinds of creatures Mm -hmm. throughout the world, whether it's fairies, gnomes, leprechauns, and things like this, which some researchers, you know, have linked to the UFO phenomena. Certainly, there are a lot of parallels. And while this child didn't see a UFO, per se, you know, a craft, he did see this short figure. Two and and a half uh, feet tall, you said, something like that. Two and a half feet tall. And who proceeds to heal him, Uh, which is really (laughs) unusual. Um, didn't use any, you know, instrumentation, just sort of, a, at least that wasn't reported. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have to say that, you know, of the 300 cases, a good 10% don't involve instruments. It's it's more of a hands-on healing done on the part of the ETs. Do you, uh, do so you that think, does happen. Yeah, do you think we humans can do that sometime in the future, Preston? Oh, yeah. The hands-on fact, healing. Yeah, I put a chapter on this in the book uh, because this is – something the ETs are very interested in teaching people. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's something that, you know, it's probably the most common thing I see in terms of people who have had extensive contact 
and uh, come away from their experience transformed in some way. Often it'll be like maybe channeling or dowsing or giving psychic readings, but usually it's some sort of Reiki or hands-on healing mm -hmm. uh, of some form and often very effective. I mean, one lady I interviewed, she quit her job as a telephone operator and uh, became a massage therapist and healer. And she got all these testimonials of people seeing light coming out of her hands and actually healing them. And as she's doing it, she gets this vision in her head of the gray ETs up, um, up in their ship. They're like fussing around with knobs and levers and stuff to assist her in her healing. Uh, it's very fascinating. That is. That is. A, it's a, it kind of reminds me of what we used to think about in 1968 and 69 of, of literally uh, helping others out without looking for any pay, any anything. You just help. You serve. I think that's a major part of, if you don't mind my saying, Jesus. Uh, do you mind that? Oh, not at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, yeah. uh, but you know, one of the great healers of all time um, who can uh, actually, actually taught other people, of course, to heal, especially women. He was much more strong in relationship to women than, than our present uh, any any religion talks about uh, and that's that's one of the things that excited me so much to learn about that well what types of oh, break time on 21st century radio with our guest preston dennett we're going to be talking about the healing power of ufos 300 true accounts of people healed by extraterrestrials published by blue giant books in 2019 and later, we're the undersea UFO base. You want to hang around there for that because that is extraordinary. Both books are available on Amazon via the links you'll find on the front page of 21stCenturyRadio.com. Do you appreciate the Statue of Liberty as an American goddess? Well, we do in our new book, Secret Life of Lady Liberty, Goddess in the New World. It's been described as a long overdue feminist and multi-ethnic history of the Statue of Liberty that surprisingly draws our country's entire history through this iconic image. Appreciating the Statue of Liberty as America's goddess allowed us to explore her Native American and feminist roots and to envision a sustainable future where liberty indeed prevails. What can the Statue of Liberty teach us about women's power? We'll find out at www.secretlifeofladyliberty.com. That's secretlifeofladyliberty.com. Hello, this is Alejandro Rojas, UFO journalist with OpenMinds.tv. You're listening to 21st Century Radio with Dr. Bob Hieronymus. You can read more about us at OpenMinds.tv. Welcome back with our guest, Preston Dennett. We're talking about the healing power of UFOs, 300 true accounts of people healed by extraterrestrials. You think we like this book? Yes, we more than like this book. We love this book. As a matter of fact, let's do this very quickly. Anyone who buys a copy of this book, you can have, if you can prove it, you can have any book that I've written or my wife has written or over the past 30 some years. We have books going all the way back to 1988 for those who've been listening to us for that long period of time. Okay. Are you with us, Preston? I'm here. Okay. How, excuse me, what types of illnesses and conditions have been healed? Oh, it's astonishing. You know, of the 300 cases I document here, 70 involve injuries of all kinds. And by that, I mean, you know, cuts, uh, broken bones, uh, head injuries, back injuries, uh, a huge variety of injuries. Uh, about 50 cases involving minor illnesses and infections, you know, like the flu, perhaps, or uh, colds and things like that. Uh, 120 cases involving serious illnesses and 40 involving cancer. So, I mean, I put a list in the book. Here's, I'll just do a quick rundown of some of the cases because, I mean, it's a, the variety is amazing. It is. It is uh, amazing. 
AIDS. There's two cases involving AIDS, arthritis, 20 cases, uh, asthma, uh, Chagas disease. There's one case involving that, Crohn's disease, colitis, diabetes, diphtheria, a couple of cases involving eczema, epilepsy, a uh, bunch of cases involving eye improvements and dental improvements, uh, kidney problems, liver problems, hypoglycemia, uh, case involving multiple sclerosis, one involving muscular dystrophy. I mean, it goes on, rheumatism, strokes. There's a very long list of conditions that ETs healed. And what I've discovered is if you examine onboard UFO accounts, there's a very strong medical theme that runs through them. The single most common thing people report, and this is borne out by several studies and certainly my own research, is that people are physically examined. And I believe, you know, at this point, that the extraterrestrials know more about the human body than we do. Yeah, I uh, bet you and, they do. Yeah, and it's evidenced by the fact that they're curing what we would call chronic diseases. Well, now, how are these healings done, and where do they take place? Do you know, do they, these people go to an office or something? Uh, well, the healings are done in a number of different ways. I would say most common, it's probably about 50% of the cases involve light uh, from, of some form. Perhaps it's coming from the UFO itself and shining down on them, or perhaps they're taken on board and the ETs are holding instruments that emit laser-like lights. Uh, that's very common. There are some cases involving medicine. That's not common, but a good you know, 10, 20% involve pills or lotions of some form or you know, a drink that, that they're given. Uh, sometimes you know, there's no known method. It's just being in the mere presence of a UFO seems to affect a cure. So it's hard to say as far as where these cases are taking place. Yeah. Uh, we do know that. Uh, about half of the cases, people are taken on board a craft, and they're given some sort of a operation or surgery or procedure. Uh, and about 20% of the cases, people are outside, uh, perhaps driving their car or walking. Uh, another 20% people are usually in their homes, usually their bedrooms. And here, this really shocked me, and I wasn't expecting it. 10% of the cases, um, at least, take place in hospitals, in hospital <laughs> rooms. <laughs> well, that's I wonderful. Know. That's wonderful because there are so many mistakes made in hospitals. I, I'm glad, glad they're hanging around there. The, my, I, I, talked yeah. about, I talked about my, my sister. I mean, she was treated terribly, terrible. Northwest Hospital has something is really wrong there. Excuse me, but boy, uh, some uh, they may even take into court someday for what happened. Go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, our, our, our medical health system's got some real problems, and this comes up. I mean, there's one case where a gentleman was visited by ETs who were working on his knee. He's like, oh, you're hurting me, you're hurting me. And they said, well, we're trying to heal your knee. Um, this was a gray who was manipulating his knee, and the other gray, there was two of them, was in the bathroom, lifted up some pain medication, and walked back into the you know main room, the living room, and uh, asked the the witness about its use and what was it for. And often, you know, they will express sort of a not a disdain, but a sort of a disappointment in how primitive our uh, yeah. own medical research is. Mm -hmm. That does come up. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, but, what well, what kinds of people are being healed? All kinds of people. Like, this was the really kind of interesting to me at first, and it also bothered me because I couldn't find any patterns. Uh, the first thing I looked for, you know, of the 300 cases is, you know, it's evenly divided between men and women, certainly all across the planet. Uh, most of the cases are from the United States, but that's certainly because of, you know, I'm centered here in, here in California. Uh, but absolutely worldwide. The United States produces more than in anyone else. Can Canada, I think, is next. Then England and Russia and all the major so-called superpowers, uh, which to makes total sense. I couldn't find any basis on you know race or religion or 
age even, or cases involving very young children, uh, cases involving very elderly people as well. So what I did finally find is one pattern which kept turning up. And about, about the you know, 50th time I saw it, I'm like, well, this, I, I think this is a thing. And that is profession, a person's job. And it's a loose pattern. But what I found is that people who are doing good work for humanity in some capacity uh, have a much more higher likelihood of being healed. Now, if you have a history of UFO encounters, that certainly does increase your chances because about half the cases involve people who have a history of onboard experiences. Uh, but a good third don't. And this weird pattern kept turning up involving people who are social workers, perhaps, inventors, doctors, turns up a lot, teachers, uh, entertainers even, uh, human rights activists, this sort of thing. And yeah, it turns up enough for I'm like, huh, wow, here it is again. Yeah, yes. And that, that's super important. Service to others is the key to, in my opinion, absolutely most everything. That's how when people get involved with serving others without thinking about themselves, then that kind of love is this kind of love Jesus had, if you don't mind my saying. All right. There are at least three cases that support that. I find it interesting, a quote from Betty Andreessen, very oh. famous abductee, where the Greys told her flat out that love is the answer for humankind. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. It's all it's so simple and would solve so many of our problems. You're darn right. We understood that back in 1968 and 69. And that's what Woodstock was all about. But most people had no idea what was going on. Now, how many cases are there? Are there more healings or, or, or injuries? Uh, you know, the 300 cases I've documented in this book are only the tip of the iceberg. Also, I'm still yeah. finding new cases every time I speak about this. And here's the thing. Um, I think most UFO researchers will agree with this. Most people don't report their sightings, their yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. something I always ask people when I interview them, like, ha have you told anyone else? You know, who did you report? Did you report call to the police, a UFO reporting center? Uh, most people don't. I'm going to say one in 10 do it. And that's being very generous. Uh, I'm probably closer to one in a hundred. So I'm guessing there's way more than what we're seeing here. And here's another problem. There's a wide variety of alternative healings coming from different sources. Uh, if you look into the literature on angels, it's very compelling. And there are a lot of healing cases and some really remarkable similarities to, you know, ET encounters, Indeed. beings of light coming and healing people. Light seems to be an extremely important aspect, whether or not it's, I've always been curious about their difference between their green lights and their blue lights and their orange lights as to whether or not they have, do you know if they have any spe speciality with, with each one of those different colors? I uh, have not been able to determine that because what I'm seeing in these cases is a wide variety of colors. You sure are. <laughs> um, there was, yeah, I mean, the Peruvian's customs official sees a, goes out onto his veranda and is, sees a UFO up there and, and this purple beam of light comes down and strikes him. And he is healed of nearsightedness as a result of, you know, being struck by this beam of light. And his rheumatism, his chronic rheumatism, cleared up right afterwards. Wonderful. How wonderful. Well, is there any evidence or proof to support UFO healings? Oh, yeah. You know, some cases rely on, you know, eyewitness testimony for the most part. Other cases are extremely well documented. Uh, there was a case from Brazil, Ventura Maceres who was struck by a beam of light from a UFO. And uh, there was a lot of physical evidence to support his story because he suffered from what amounted to a light case of radiation sickness. He had vomiting, nausea. Hmm. Uh, he, there was burn marks on the tops of the eucalyptus trees. A bunch of fish in a nearby stream died. All these you know, ancillary pieces of evidence to support it. And then this gentleman started to grow a third set of teeth. Mind you, he's 73. Oh, isn't um, that wonderful? Um, <laughs> Big and, surprise uh, he, there. <laughs> yeah, and he was examined by 40 or 50 different officials in different capacities, government officials, doctors, certainly, UFO investigators, law enforcement, 
a uh, lot of people showed interest in his case, you know, because it was so remarkable. Another gentleman, Jim Schaefer from Winnipeg, Canada, uh, I interviewed him myself. He sent me his medical records uh, showing a cancerous tumor on his neck. Uh, he had an experience with this glowing orb, which went into his body. He went to sleep, woke up the next day, and this uh, tumor on his neck, a visible tumor, was gone. I was scheduled for surgery in about three days from then, I believe it was. Uh, went to the sur surgeon, and he had been very forthcoming with his doctor. Um, he had his uh, medical history of UFO visitations and told his doctor what was happening because he'd come back with you know, cuts and bruises and things like this. And the doctor was like, huh, you know, I, I don't know what to say, but I can't explain this or that. And then he goes and says, well, you know, the tumor was taken away. And they were astounded. Uh, they still did the operation to remove necrotic tissue, uh, but could not find any cancer and marked his case as a miraculous healing. Didn't put in, you know, ET healed him, <laughs> um, but could, yeah, could not account for it and definitely found him believable. And certainly I did. Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of ETs are performing these healings? Another very interesting thing about this whole phenomena is I was kind of expecting to hear that these healings were mostly done by human looking, you know, so-called mm -hmm. Nordic. It's not a term I really like because uh, there are lots of human looking ETs who are not Nordic looking in, in that sense. Uh, one gentleman, he said it was the ET he saw really looked more Middle Eastern. Uh, than anything else. And another gentleman said, oh, they look like, you know, maybe South American, Peruvian, Mexican. Uh, so you get all different types of human looking ETs. And that's definitely a category for sure. But half of the healings, now this is in cases where people see a humanoid, half are some version of the greys. After that, it would be human looking. Uh, there are a number of cases involving praying mantis ETs. Oh, that is special. Uh, it's it's and those are the main three types I see you know beyond UFO healing cases, and there's a huge category of just sort of a catch-all category of short humanoids, tall humanoids. Uh, as an example, one lady I interviewed, a uh, lady from Nebraska, a housewife suffering from hypoglycemia, uh, found herself in this chamber, like an underground base, is what she thought it might be, and there was this nine-foot-tall humanoid. Uh, who has healed her? And she says it was not human. It had, it was, you know, eight or nine feet tall, had a very broad, broad face, a huge chin, huge forehead, very strange eyes. And it wasn't hair on his head. It was something else. She said like straw, very <laughs> thick and orange and stuck straight up. Isn't that, that's adorable. That's, and, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and this being, you know, cure, put these silver bell-like instruments on her body which pulsed energy into her body. At the time, she was very sick. You know, she was passing out every day, uh, have, had a real blood sugar problem that the doctors could not diagnose. And uh, passed out at this point. She was very frightened and woke up back in her home, and she stopped passing out from that day on. She was fine. So yeah, right. a wide variety of beings are doing these healings, but it's mostly great. And for that matter, I mean, like here at this case, it's so bizarre. Uh, this guy's are driving to the hospital because he's in kidney pain from a kidney stone. It's very painful. It's rushing to the hospital and a UFO shows up and starts circling the car. And his pain gets less and less and less and less. And the UFO darts away. The pain is gone. They go to the hospital anyway and cannot find any kidney stone, which had been previously diagnosed. So no being seen there. I don't know who's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need another break here on 21st Century Radio with our guest... P.S. Preston Dennett, The Healing Power of UFOs, 300 True Accounts. We're not going to get any 300, but let me tell you, this is an extraordinary book. Anybody interested in UFOs needs this book. We're going to try to put this book in the hands of many young people because we build libraries and send libraries out to children and uh, especially those people who have no money to get any of these things. Uh, we'll take a break here and we'll be right back. How would you like to win a free copy of the book we're talking about? 
The Healing Power of UFOs, 300 True Accounts of People Healed by Extraterrestrials by Preston Dennett. We're going to give him a Ph.D. He deserves one. He deserves a couple of Ph.D.s, but we can only give him one. What about, uh, he's put, this one was published by Blue Giant Books. If you know the answer to this hour's trivia question, you will win that book. Who was our guests the last time I hosted 21st Century Radio Live? The last time I hosted 21st Century Live, live let, us, let me know who our two guests were. If you do that, and you need to be qualified. So here's how you qualify. If you know the answer to this hour's quiz question on 21st Century Radio and you have not won from us in the last 60 days, call in now. 410-922-6680. That's 410-WCBM680. First with the right answer wins. Prizes are available for you to pick up at the WCBM studios in Pikesville after Friday of this week. Winners have 60 days to pick up the prizes and must wait 60 days before winning another prize from 21st Century Radio. Good luck. This is Jan Harzan, Executive Director for the Mutual UFO Network, otherwise known as MUFON. You can learn more about me at MUFON.com. And you're listening to 21st Century Radio with Dr. Bob Aronimus. Okay. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. We're still hearing UFOs in the background. And our guest, of course, is Preston Dennett. Now, Preston, what do these types of cases say about E.T.? Are they benevolent or are they hostile? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, this is a great question because what we see, you know, in terms of uh, the media with the UFO phenomena is it's very fear-based. Yeah. And these types of cases are not presented very often. That's right. Uh, certainly, I've you know surveyed the major researchers, and pretty much all of them do have these kinds of cases. Uh, Bud Hopkins, certainly. David Jacobs, Edith Fiore, uh, Tim Beckley, Brad Steiger. I mean, I could go down the list. Barbara yeah. Lamb, Yvonne Smith, they're all reporting these types of cases, but we don't hear a lot about them. I think one of the reasons is that people who have traumatic experiences seek therapy and help and uh, so try to sort of socialize their conflict and get some help. Uh, whereas people who are, say, healed uh, don't have that need and may be even more reluctant to report their case due to its sensational nature. Uh, but for sure, this phenomena of UFO healings shows a much brighter side to the ETs, a much more benevolent and positive side and if you look at sort of the umbrella of human behavior and compare that to you know how the ETs are behaving, I think you'll find it's very similar in a lot of ways, except it's skewed towards the positive. Because what we don't see with in terms of onboard UFO experiences is what I would call sadism or torture or mass murderers or you know things like this. Uh, the worst we really get is um, some people do report pain, certainly during some of the, these procedures. Uh, it's not super common, and often the pain is relieved uh, once the patient starts feeling it. Uh, but sometimes people feel like they're being treated very much like a lab rat, a lab animal. Uh, there's little regard for their feelings. Uh, the ETs are not very communicative, uh, communicative in some cases. Uh, that's a minority. I'm going to say a good half, at least, of the people who have had a healing uh, feel very benevolent towards the ETs. And there are a good number of cases that just smack of altruism. Uh, there's another percentage of cases that don't, where people feel like, you know, they're just using me to produce hybrid babies, uh, this sort of thing. Uh, there was one gentleman who didn't remember his experiences consciously. Uh, he went under hypnosis and covered some fairly horrendous um, memories of operations at the hands of ETs. Uh, it was not a pleasant experience for him, even though they did cure him twice, once of a mole on his face and another of kidney stones. Uh, so it's, it's hard to really say you know, exactly the intentions of the ETs uh, in terms of the healing cases, but it does, to me, 
it sounds like, I mean, some of these cases, yeah, are absolutely altruistic. I've always been a bit concerned, though, about their, um, the UFO itself. Some have seen to be toxic when people get too close to them. Now, that's not what the ETs want to happen. It's just that I, I know you, you listed one or two of the cases that I'm talking about in which they had cancer and it took a long time. Uh, and they eventually ended up dying, uh, unfortunately. And the government, uh, the government ignored their problem altogether because they didn't believe that that had any that that they actually were aboard an ET or uh, excuse, excuse me a UFO or was related to that. Do you remember those cases? Oh yeah, yeah. There are a good you know se- hundred several hundred cases involving what you would term injuries. Uh, that's you got to be careful when you use that term because some people just refer like eye irritation. Is that an injury? Well, you know, in some cases, people have reported se- more serious uh, problems. It's not uncommon to have a migraine headache after a close-up UFO sighting. I did not know that was a thing, uh, but that certainly does turn up. Uh, there are a good number of cases where people have gotten too close to a UFO or were struck by a beam of light from one and suffered what would be diagnosed today certainly is radiation sickness. Uh, And some have died from this. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, there is a dark side to this phenomena. Probably not a good idea to just run up to any UFO you see, but in general, I'm not, I don't think that this is something to be afraid of. I don't think they're trying to hurt people. That's not the agenda at all. Right. I agree. I agree. Uh, But I think the the military is going to look at it a bit differently. And a lot of politicians are going to look at it differently. And that's why I think your book is so important. Uh, Because my being able to put this book in the hands of other people that I've argued with about this for some years is is going to make me very happy. And I think it will make them happy too. Because, uh, you know, all of us want to think more positively. Uh, What do these cases tell us about our own medical technology? We touched actually on this a little earlier. Yeah, well, certainly we're seeing some remarkable parallels. We do use light a lot more now to cure people. Uh, We're speeding up the healing of flesh wounds uh, using electrical impulses. We use uh, laser beams to cure people of uh, detached retina. There are cases just like that in the ET literature. Uh, Betty Hill, she described a laparoscopy before, you know, this was in wide use. So we know that Uh, They're using basically the same methods we use, and these cases should show us that such a thing as chronic is a misnomer Mm -hmm. or incurable. It's just not true. There are a lady from uh, Canada who had terminal cancer and was was expected to die, ended up having an onboard experience and a rather prolonged and painful operation at the hands of ETs. Uh, who told her, don't take any more medicine after we're done. You know, just drink water. You're going to be fine. And she was. She got very sick afterwards. Doctors thought she was going to die. Her whole family was called. But she rallied and recovered completely from terminal cancer. Uh, There's a lot of cases like that. So uh, I think this provides sort of an avenue or certainly hope uh, to look into, you know, so-called terminal cases and realize they're not. You know, why would an ET travel light years to cure someone of a common cold? Yeah, there's so many cases like this, too. I know. I mean, Chuck, <laughs> but Chuck that... Doyle from Kentucky, 13 years old, has a terrible head cold. is out in his backyard and struck by a beam of light from a UFO, which cures him. I mean, is this an accident? I don't know. Um, it's really hard to say. But there are so many cases like this. Jim Sparks, a well-known abductee, was cured. Oh, Jim, yeah. Yeah, he was cured of the flu. Later had an experience where he was taken on board a craft, and the ETs handed him this um, box, this clear little box filled with black goo. It stunk real bad. And they said, this is our (laughs) gift to you. He's like, well, (laughs) what's this? And they're like, well, we removed this from your lungs. Oh, my gosh. Right. He was a heavy smoker at the time. Got another case just like this, same exact thing. The witness says the same exact thing, except describes a slightly different container. was really the only difference. And later, the ETs came back because this guy, the same guy, had started smoking marijuana. 
And the ETs were furious and said, you have to stop smoking marijuana. This is not the life we had planned for you. Yeah, they, they do take part in your life, that's for sure. Uh, do ETs help other people in other ways? Yes, and it's really remarkable. And I keep hearing more cases like this. I just found a case where people saw a UFO hovering over the Three Mile Island plant, and it was immediately the next day that the officials announced that the damage was not nearly as bad as they thought there it was, and they, cause they were expecting a full meltdown. And these witnesses are like, hmm, and it, could it be possible that ETs have healed or helped us? Got a lot of cases like this in the book. Here's a great one. This guy's driving along a highway, I believe this is in Colorado, at night, and uh, suddenly this UFO appears in front of him on the road and shines down a beam of light right on the road in front of him, illuminating a mattress on the road, which he would have hit. <laughs> um, he had time to swerve around it. Um, why would, you know, what's going on here? Um, Artie Six Killer Clark uh, provides cases like this. There's like another case in Nevada. Three teenagers had gotten their car stuck in the sand in the desert. There was They were pretty far from civilization. They were going to have to spend the night. And a UFO shows up and lifts their car out of the sand and puts it on the road. That may sound unusual, but I have to tell you, I've written a number of books on various states, UFOs over California, New York, Nevada, Arizona. They all have what are called car lift cases, where cars are levitated. This is something UFOs do, and they help these kids out in that case. A number of cases involving people saved with car accidents. One lady was saved from assault. A couple of people saved of drowning a case in South America from RD6 Color Clark, this UFO hovers over an entire village and protect, protects it from hurricane winds and torrential rains, which were threatening to wash away the entire village. Holy so, yeah, it does happen. One last question here this hour. How do healings compare to miraculous healings, UFO healings? How do they compare to the miraculous healings? Yeah, well... The, as we mentioned earlier, there are other miraculous healings, and there's a very strong parallels with angels, certainly. Yeah. Uh, another thing I looked into was near-death experiences, uh, which is you know connected to the other side and out-of-body experiences, astral travel. Uh, 20 or 30 cases of people have been healed of chronic illnesses and injuries through that you know, a near-death experience. Another thing, and this was shocking to me, literally, no pun intended, was uh, lightning. Uh, I knew of a case, Mary Clamser, uh, who was cured of multiple sclerosis after being struck by lightning, looked into it. Turns out there's a long history of this, about 100 cases in the medical literature, oh, like the Lancet yeah. Journal. You know, it's really reputable medical journals have reported a wide variety of healings of paralysis, blindness, deafness, uh, cancer, and really a long variety of diseases stretching back over 100 years. Lightning. Well, well, we're just about out of time for this hour. And when we return, Preston, you're going to talk to us about underwater UFOs. I don't know if you knew this, but underwater UFOs are my favorite UFOs, except for cigar-shaped craft. They're also... I've actually put in my murals at Johns Hopkins University various types of craft, especially those of the cigar shape. We'll be back with our guest in just a few minutes. Stay informed on the number one news talk station, Talk Radio 680, WCBM, Baltimore, and WCBM.com. Democratic.